Thank you everyone for tuning in. I'm super honored to be speaking here today at DEFCON. This is my first DEFCON talk. I'm super honored to be here today. And I wish that we can all have a normal DEFCON and we'd be able to meet everyone in person, but hopefully next year when life gets back to normal. Yeah, let's start. So who am I? I'm Mazen Ahmed. I'm a cyber security engineer and I specialize in offensive security and AppSec. I also founded Full Hunt. If you haven't heard about Full Hunt, it's the next generation assets discovery slash monitoring slash scanning slash a lot of cool things that are happening in the background. Uh, if you haven't tried it or checked it out, you should definitely do. It will be one of the coolest things uh, in security one day soon. Uh, before that, I worked in the security engineering of uh, Proton Mail. I was also uh, I'm also a bug bounty participant where I reported uh, security vulnerabilities to Facebook, to the Department of Defense, to Twitter, and many others. I'm interested in web, infra, mobile, and cloud security, web evasions security automation and DevSecOps and many other cool things in security and you can read more at mazenahmed.net and you can find my contact details there and yeah let's start so the agenda for today of course we're talking about hacking zoom but before that we need to have a quick intro about zoom just in case so for and then we're gonna have a background findings a retrospective on the zoom's last minute vdp recommendations final thoughts and then we would have a room for q a zoom everyone knows it today everyone is using it it's literally in everywhere in the world every company almost every company is using it government use it use uh, governments use it too uh, we saw last week the hearing of the Twitter hack where the hearing was done via Zoom and that hack happened at the hearing live. It was quite bad, but yeah, so this proves that everyone is using it. In May 2020, the market valuation for Zoom is 50 billion USD. I'd like to bring this chart here. This is a comparison between the market capital of Zoom against the top seven airlines in the world, including United and Delta. Uh, so combining the top seven airlines uh, market capital, Zoom would be e uh, either equal or have a higher market capital. This is crazy just to think about it, how Zoom became today. And the rise of Zoom started with the global pandemic. Everyone knows about that. So from a stock performance, all, almost all of the companies were in the same range as, you, as we can see here. And then it jumped, it actually skyrocketed by May with all what was happening and meanwhile all of these uh, top airlines were qu were quickly falling down as we can see for me I just find this really interesting to imagine how zoom became today yeah and because how important uh, is zoom this is where my research started so in air in March, March 2020, Patrick Walder gave a talk at Opcode about how the Zoom security and the state of security at Zoom, and he disclosed a number of security vulnerabilities in the Mac OS uh, client of Zoom, and he this brings a lot of attention to the media and to me personally. And from that, I got more interested and started uh, my research from there. So what was tested before? 
the Zoom Mac OS app. It was tested. We can read about it uh, in the media, and we can read about it uh, in researches done by Patrick Walder and uh, many others. It was hacked. It was really bad. It was reusing really bad practices. There was a lot of Zoom privacy concerns, and yeah, the Facebook, the way that Zoom is sharing data to Facebook, and a lot of things we can also see. But what was not tested before? Of course, many things. This is just I can just uh, I just share two, but many things has not been tested before. For me, I'm trying to take into couple of things and that I will be showing now. One thing that was not tested was the Zoom Linux uh, app. Nothing. I have tried to search about any research or disclosure for any vulnerability in the Zoom Linux client. I haven't seen anything. This is one thing that I wanted to see or to focus on. The Zoom external attack surface. Zoom became huge and there was no focus on the external attack surface of Zoom. The Zoom cloud infrastructure, how it's being set up and different things related to the infra. And of course, the Zoom's new end-to-end -end encryption implementation. We have seen it to the media. Did anyone test it? Uh, we can uh, talk about that later. And of course, many. There are a lot of things. I only focused on these. Definitely, there is a lot of room of, uh, for research in this area. So the findings agenda, I'm not going to go to each one of them now. We will talk about them later. It's just here for people who are curious to see what we're going to talk about. A quick disclaimer. The entire research is non-funded. This is a non-funded research. I have done everything here in my spare time. Just to confirm that or state that. The research background. The first finding that I identified was in April 2020. And my expectations did not match what I was seeing in the media. We will know how later. The first conclusive response for my finding that I was uh, that I reported in April 2020, I got it in July. This wasn't a very uh, pleasing experience, and this after a lot of follow-ups, of course, from my side, and after submitting the CFP to DEFCON, the second round of uh, research started. And that at that time, I identified additional six new different vulnerabilities and security related issues. And of course, everything was reported to to Zoom. And the reward was zero dollars. Yeah, I just want to say that. So the first step for doing any type of offensive research is the reconnaissance. I understanding the attack surface. Um, that's where I started with. I used fullhunt.io to get the zoom details. The API returned around 30, 13 domains and this is the list of domains that was report, uh, that was discovered. I took a portion of them and analyzed them. The remaining are there. If anyone would like to have a test drive, feel free. And let's go to the findings. One thing that I noticed that there was uh, two servers that are having a Kerberos service uh, running. And when I saw that, I got interested to see what's happening there. Apparently, there was two exposed uh, uh, Kerberos servers that was exposed unintentionally to the internet, and no one knew, ab knew about them. Uh, so this one had also 
um, a serv a web service running on port 80 and it was free IPA if you don't know it's uh, free IPA it's an identity management solution uh, that was developed by Red Hat uh, it's, uh, it's open source you can check it out and uh, I started by testing the web interface as, as you can see in this screenshot when you are providing a, an invalid username you can see that there is a, a reverse error that is telling you that and one thing that I did not mention here that whenever you see a Kerberos server running it by itself it's not huge but once you compromise it or you have a single uh, credential that is valid then this would open a crazy large um, amount of attack surface for you to attack and that's what I was doing I want to get initial foothold there and then uh, go from there so I started doing user enumeration there and you can see here the previous one was showing that there was an error uh, this user is not found by the kind and here it's saying that the authentication field or the pre-authentication field which means that we can uh, we can uh, we are able to identify valid usernames and then I started building word list based on different things to identify more usernames so that I can uh, brute force them I compiled the word list from the pattern that I have seen so uh, the pattern that I have seen for the uh, zoom emails are our first name dot last name at zoom.us also the common usernames that I was able to find uh, to get and the employee names of course I compiled them all and I uh, did that for user enumeration the only user that I found was ID, uh, admin at idm.meetzoom.us I then ran a number of brute force uh, sessions on them nothing interesting happened um, then I, I saw that I'm hitting a rabbit hole and it's a dead end so I, I just moved to another more interesting thing that I can find and yeah it was a good choice so the discovery of a memory leak on our zoom production server zoom allows uh, uploading profile pictures on, in, on accounts which is the typical thing the process for that is first the user uploads a profile image and the profile image is either jpg gif or png and this is the tricky one if the image is png or gif it's converted to jpg and if the image is GIF, uh, gpg the image conversion is not triggered and there is another thing here that if the image contains an invalid image header the updating profile api aborts the process so there is a good check in that uh, image header and it's using of course magic bytes the, by, by checking the magic bytes I like to test uh, image conversion or processing softwares or whenever I see an API that is utilizing that or using that I know for a fact that there is a, a large uh, potential of having something bad happening and the reason is because uh, it's image conversion is not a vital uh, functionality in, in an infrastructure of a company or uh, even a web startup so what happens is they it often gets uh, uh, forgotten and th there is no security updates that are being applied there as far as it's working then it's fine this is something that I have seen as a pattern and that's why I 
started to think that or focus on that. I so one cool exploit here or security vulnerability that was released in 2016. It was known as the image tragic exploit or vulnerability, and this vulnerability allowed uh, having a um, remote code execution into into the instance that is running the image processing when providing certain payloads. You can read more about the CVE uh, offline. So I have tested this one and they seem to have this one patched. So it, it, and I moved to the next one. It did not work. So I moved to the next one. And there is a vulnerability in image magic that was reported in 2017. And it works by having, whenever the, the palette is, uh, uninitialized or not presented in the JEP file, basically. Image magic lo uh, leaks portions of the memory to the generated or the rendered image. And this is the fix for the vulnerability that was issued at that time, or around July 2017. I generated a payload that renders this way on a normal browser or normal software that is patched. But when I upload the payload to Zoom, it renders this way. But if you are reading the report for the, that CVE, this is the typical uh, behavior of having the exploit being successful. And if you download this image and try to 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 decode uh, to obtain the strings from it, or you would find that it's taking some portions of the memory. Then I thought that maybe this is an let's say uh, image processing software fault or best effort just to render the image that is corrupted or there is a problem that is happening because of rendering a black image so I generated a new one that is not the pa like the payload it's not the uh, one that uh, that this one has initialized uh, palettes and when I report it, it renders normally. Okay, this sounds really interesting. We have a memory leak on Zoom production. Typical thing is to automate the exploitation for that. And the st flow for that would be to generate a new, a new unique payload, then to upload it to Zoom, wait for the rendering to happen, download the rendered file, extract the data from the corrupted file that was rendered by Zoom, repeat and store re leaked uh, memory portions. Uh, so this proof of concept does that. I'm going to have a demo time, which is cool. Here it generated the image and uploaded it to Zoom. I'm downloading the image now and here recovering the dump. So here, a memory leak on Zoom production was not, not the end for that. 
I, rem- I remember that in 2018, Travis Romande released uh, a research on Ghost Script, which was used by uh, Image Magic. And his uh, research revealed a number of critical vulnerabilities in uh, Ghost Script. And the proof of concept that uh, he shared in the research when doing image conversion can uh, le- can lead to a remote code execution. And it was really cool to see this. And what I did is I used the proof of concept that uh, Travis wrote. And I will show you this thing first. So we know for a fact that the 2016 v 714 the image tragic is passed. But we kind of think that the image magic memory leak is presented based on the proof of exploitation we had here. And that one was uh, patched in, tw- uh, released, uh, the patch was released in 20, May 2016, and the patch for the memory leak was released in July 2017. And it's not patched. Based on that, we can safely say that the ghost script RFC is not fast, right? So I wrote, uh, like I, I uh, brought the proof concept from the research that Travis Sormandi wrote, and I replicated it uh, locally with the same environment I assume Zoom have it on their setup with the same uh, version that uh, with the same range of versions that uh, Zoom is using uh, mostly and yeah it's working and fortunately for or fortunately I'm not sure which one would suit that but Zoom API slash p slash upload checks for magic bytes otherwise a full exploitation would have been possible but still this does not mean that uh, like zoom is safe if there is any particular API that is utilizing the same functionality and it's not checking the magic bytes and this would lead to a full remote code execution this doesn't sound nice this doesn't sound good by any means and I don't know how to say this but the RCE vulnerability is probably still there in Zoom production another thing we have here is the shadow IT and Zoom I have noticed that there is a number of uh, instances or the, or cases where Zoom have shadow IT servers running in different uh, host names, and they are not properly configured. They and they may be a good uh, target for conducting a successful attack. I have seen this in uh, multiple occasions. This example here. This is uh, showing an instance that did not have any patches since, let me check, September 10th, 2019. I took this picture in July 4th, uh, 2020, around 10, mo- 10 or 9 months of uh, time frame. There was no patches on that server for or all new builds. Uh, and we all know that there was a plenty of security vulnerabilities that was uh, reported to them and yeah you can imagine another cool thing here is the same host had nine active connections including me makes it an excellent fit for doing any type of testing without triggering alerts which is cool so that you can test it and and be safe in the part that it won't be as detected or detectable as in uh, testing zoom.us the product uh, the main website or yeah 
enough about all this and let's start to talk about the Zoom app for Linux. One cool finding here. The Zoom Linux uh, uh, client, so the TLS uh, is broken by design on Linux and you're gonna see how that is happening. I don't see this as the best practice, especially for the Zoom, but we can talk about that. So whenever there is any uh, traffic that is intercepted with a custom TLS certificate, Zoom prom uh, prompts this uh, message. While it looks normal, everything is fine here, and whenever you click trust anyway, then you would have uh, the certificate, like the traffic go going with that, uh, like with this accepted certificate, which is uh, the unplusted one. But what happens here is that this certificate, uh, like the hashes for the uh, fingerprint for this certificate, is saved locally with the same uh, permissions of the user. And when and you can simply just plug and like if you have a malware that is able to uh, to see your uh, to have access to your machine, you can uh, this malware can safely or easily just plug in the to the fingerprint of the SSL certificate, and then all of the traffic that is going to Zoom can be intercepted even if it's using SSL or TLS because the certificate will be uh, will be accepted without having to have this type of prompts because it was added to the da local database uh, on, on the background. So I wrote a simple uh, proof of concept as a sample of what a, would, a malware lo would look like as just uh, in a way or another as a concept and this particular pa uh, uh, part of the malware or the proof concept would get the, the fingerprints for all of the forged certificates that we have and then it would add it to the zoom database a local database and once it's added these certificates can can be uh, provided or to zoom and all the traffic would be uh, passing to uh, passing without having any error like this and yeah all of the encrypted traffic could be intercepted w when having a malware running the same user access as this one well i have to say this is not uh, a really bad vulnerability it's just uh, relatively not the best practice to do that but w as we are going now we're gonna see something that is really bad and we're gonna see it now so I would start with this question what's a bad design for an application launcher good question and we're gonna know the answer so user bin slash zoom is a symbol of opt slash zoom slash zoom launcher and whenever zoom is called zoom is printing the following uh logging uh, uh logging data on the scd out and there is a part where you can see it zoom path is uh, zoom path is opt zoom and then zoom not exist at current directory okay this looks interesting already what's happening in the background zoom checks for files within pwd and if there is an executable called zoom literally on pwd it executes it as a child process for zoom, uh, user bin zoom i was mind blown when i saw that why would this be there and this is a proof concept 
I created a, a, a file and then execute uh, called Zoom, and then Zoom checks on the PWD if there is a file called Zoom, literally, and executes it. Uh, of course, it has to be with uh, an executable file permission, but this is not a uh, thing. So imagine this: you have you have application whitelisting. Uh, there are a lot of points that I can make here, to be honest. That is, uh, that would show how this old design is there for. And if there is anything related to application whitelisting and your whitelisting Zoom, and this would literally break that because this is executed as a child process of a trusted application Zoom. And yeah, it's bad practice and bad design by all security, by all means. Like why would uh, this be implemented this way? So that's my answer. What's a bad design for an application launcher? I would be Zoom application launcher for Linux. Another bad thing happening here. So the Zoom local database implementation, <sighs> you'll see now. So in the configuration files of, uh, of the configuration directory of Zoom, uh, there is this file, there is uh, um, this, the local database is zoomus.db, this is the default uh, database, and a lot of other files that are there for Zoom. The most important file is the Zoom US because it has the access tokens, it has all of um, the PII for the user and everything. And as we can see here in the screen, it's run at like the per the file permission is six four four. I'll show you this six four four. This uh, gives to the user a write and read access. Okay, sounds reasonable. Nothing bad on that. Group access to give it read access. Why? Are you re re like really? Are you sure about that? But everyone to have read access into the Zoom da a local database of the Zoom user. Why? Literally, that's what I had in mind. Any code on the user machine that have access to the uh, like any code that have access to the user machine can read and exfiltrate Zoom local database config and database and configurations and more of course because the permission or the file permission for the zoom you know, uh, zoom local database is set to be read by everyone and okay another thing that is quite cool zoom is end to end encrypted is it? Uh, I, we, we can see later. But my answer is not fully. One awesome product by Zoom is Zoom Chat. And it's advertised on their website. And uh, that we can see here as a platform that is uh, that makes work and collaboration much easier in mobile and desktop and with a really clean and design and UI that looks kind of similar to what Slack is having. It's, this is not the point, but it looks good as a product, right? And as we go back here is, yeah. There are so many cool things to read, but I would focus on the security part. 
As we can see in the security and archiving, and I quote, Zoom encrypts data at all times. Again here, encryption of data in transit and at rest, and then encryption for data and mobile devices. Your messages in this chat are secured. Another one. So there are a lot of uh, advertisement that is going with how secure Zoom chat is happening. And by security, they don't really or necessarily talk about uh, application security level of secu uh, of security. But they were they are talking about how all of the data that are being passing here is is. Uh, encrypted both at rest and in transit which is uh, uh, in transit I assume they are uh, saying that it goes in SSL uh, it's cool but at rest this means that they have full end-to-end -end encryption happening right and uh, yeah repeating again the same sentences and let's watch this Mm, not sure. Just play it this way, it's fine. But on the right screen, we have Zoom chat running, and I have my group chat that is clear with no messages. And then I'm sending some sort of an encrypted message that is here because Zoom is E to E by now, E to E encrypted by now as advertised and then on the left side we can see the local database a custom one that is made by zoom that we can see for that they have it and I can just read what's happening there and what they are storing on your local device so here I sent a message and it's saying that this is a secret. Oh well, just one second. I have to repeat that. And yep. The message is being stored locally at rest in clear text and here anyone who is able to have access to the user machine is able to pull a full archive of all messages that are being sent that were, were or are supposed to be end-to-end uh, -end encrypted and it's saved in plain text and yeah this does not sound good and it's not the one that you can have a record as or a backup for your messages it's just a debugging uh, feature that they left open in production for the Linux build I'm not sure if this is applicable in Mac OS or in uh, Windows but you can see if it's uh, that it's uh, being uh, applicable here in Linux. Uh, by the way, uh, the fact that the the same database that for messages is having the six four four where is it the six four four user permission, which means that any code would be uh, that is running despite what type of user is running uh, user permission is running is able to access this uh, in end-to-end -end encrypted chat archive doesn't sound good yeah so 
Of course, I could have gone more and tested more, but at the end, this is just uh, a time that I have spent in to just to fuzz around with uh, Zoom. I did this for uh, the uh, for curiosity purposes mainly, but definitely I could have uh, spent more time. But uh, then, yeah, I jumped to the responsible disclosure now. And I started uh, the experiment in uh, around April 15. We reported that in April 18. I contacted uh, Lotus Security in Twitter, followed up with uh, the vulnerability disclosure again on 26. A couple of messages in, uh, on the background. In May 5th, of 2020, I received request closed memory leak at zoom.us. Uh, yeah, here. So, yeah, I wasn't happy. Uh, so, what's next? Tweeted about, about that. And then I was asked to send it via HackerOne. Turn on communication running. To, to run my automated exploit for the memory leak then uh, when nothing uh, seems to be happening I informed Zoom that I'm planning to present my ongoing research uh, here at DEFCON and then uh, Zoom ca told me that they cannot assess the issue as there is uh, there was no sensitive data seen despite the producibility of the vulnerability on the provided exploit. Then, and it was rep uh, closed as not applicable. Sure. Then I sent on July 11th my uh, new research results reporting new seven different security vulnerabilities, six to seven new vulnerabilities, I got an acknowledgement about receiving my report and by the way this is the first conclusive uh, uh, response regarding the memory leak issue and by conclusive I mean that they did a full analysis of what was happening on the previous ones on hacker one they were trying uh, they triggered it as valid and then they were trying to run my exploit and that's all like but this one, they they researched more and analyzed more about how this is happening and what was the cause of the issue. And it was in like literally three months after I reported it. Then further explanation from Zoom regarding the vulnerability or the findings in general. Okay, now with what was happening and then uh, from their explanation and then my response regarding each uh, analysis that they provided. So for the public authentication, yeah, you can see what's happening here, what they were, were wrote and well, yeah, for me, yeah, while well, agreeing this may be a forgotten server that was mistakenly exposed, I haven't seen any references of 2FA being implemented but in all cases it's down now so it's great oh wait I think I messed up with the messages here anyway so this is the same uh, slide from last one so uh, we did check that uh, Image magic is not used for image conversions here. But wait, the same vulnerability is being reproduced. It's maybe a fork of image magic or an image processing software that is vulnerable to the same CVE of not being able to parse GIF images of that have an initialized uh, palettes. This sounds reasonable. In all cases, it's clear that something is wrong, right? Shadow IT and Zoom. So these are not 
non-sensitive information disclosure from a shared environment. Information hygiene is important to us and we appreciate you reporting this finding. So that's great. So Full Hunt can help here. Probably the best product out there for mitigating shadow IT risks. Oh, I think part uh, part of the discussion regarding uh, the image conversion is not uh, placed on uh, the slide, but please check my blog after that to have the full list of uh, discussion. So for what was happening for the Linux uh, app findings, yeah, uh, it, they fixed it or patched it in 5.2.0 that was released in August uh, 3rd, I think. They were supposed to, send, uh, to patch or uh, release it on August 2nd, but it was released on August uh, 3rd. In all cases, I have uh, read the change log. There was no mention whatsoever for any security patches. So clearly it was a silent fix, which it wasn't a nice thing. At least uh, users should have some transparency of the state of security for the company that they use or trust. Yeah, the patches. I just told you about uh, how uh, like the uh, the patches for what 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 happened for the Zoom Linux app. For what was happening with um, the image conversion, they decided to not patch it because they are not seeing sensitive data and then uh, that are being uh, exposed. Then. What happened is they ask, uh, they say, stated that they are not using image magic, but still the same vulnerability is, uh, behavior of the vulnerability is being reproduced as a result of the image conversion. So clearly something bad is happening, but um, I'm not a part of Zoom to, or I don't have a say on Zoom to have them fix that. So. I my responsibility is just to as part of the research that I'm conducting is to just let them know and that's all uh, what else the findings the shadow IT I'm not sure if uh, they they started uh, reviewing all of their shadow IT instances that's something that they supposed to do for the Kerber server they took it down which is good which is awesome and yeah, uh, um, they told us, oh, they told me with that they are patching all of the vulnerabilities in for the Linux app uh, on the Zoom, on the release of August second or August third. It was released with no mention for any security fixes or updates. Yeah, the it was for me it was a difficult or experience to be able to report these vulnerabilities and to them. In the beginning, there was a lack of communication, despite all of what was happening or hear uh, that I was hearing in the media. Every now and then, I see that Zoom has uh, patched uh, a critical or severe vulnerability that was. Uh, even attacking things that are less riskier than what I have found, but it was generating a lot of uh, uh, media PR that is uh, bad for or, or negative to Zoom. And I assume that was the reason why they are patching it that quickly, comparing to my experience to Zoom VDP. And uh, yeah, of course, I did not release anything that I found before this talk to like uh, unauthorized, uh, un other parties or unauthorized parties. And yeah, so it was not mentioned in the media before. I did not uh, share it with anyone in the media. That's why probably one reason it wasn't that uh, fixed or my experience wasn't as the same as the vulnerabilities that was shared in the media. And that's one thing. I'm not sure. But I would be surprised 
if I'm the only researcher in the, uh, in the world that have this experience with Zoom uh, security. I would be really surprised about that. Another part is the massive growth versus security. Zoom has massively grown in 2020 in a way that no one could have imagined. Zoom has been here forever and uh, what the growth that they got during 2020 was something that I, for me it was uh, like no one would have expected this to happen. And this reflected a lot on the security. A lot of people have a clear focus on the security of Zoom since it's, it became a part of our lives. Everyone is using it. I'm, I use it. My company uses it. Everyone that I know uses Zoom. And that's why security is extremely important now for Zoom. And the thing is, having security means that you have to have a full security program running. It's not that easy to have a full security program. And there are a lot of things to consider to when doing that. For me, in, when I build security programs in companies, I take a lot of time to do that. And this is the typical thing. Even if we have the highest budget, like, similar to what Zoom is having, it does not come to how like how how much budget is allocated to to Zoom to Zoom security. It's about different processes that should have been already done before the pandemic. And having a last minute security program or a last minute uh, VDP uh, vulnerability disclosure program is not easy and can cause a lot of errors and mistakes happening like in communications and focus these type of patterns that I have seen with uh, with Zoom is something that could are possibly happening to all of uh, the researchers that have been reporting to Zoom responsibly I'm just saying that there is a lot of work for the security program to at Zoom to be done. The reward, yeah, that's another thing. It um, one thing that I also see that Zoom counts uh, like have as advertised a bug bounty program, and then have the reward for all of the research that they have conducted as uh, zero USD. Uh, this is not a 